Hey everybody, welcome back to Park Attack. Today I want to showcase three parks made by Studio KV. And just for a bit of context, I don't necessarily want to make my channel into a showcase channel of this game, but Studio KV is somebody I've been following on YouTube for a long time. And honestly, whenever I started recording a new video of one of the scenarios of the campaign mode of this game, I always checked out his videos on the game uh, just for inspiration and ideas. He makes absolutely amazing videos. And while his main language is Korean, uh, he does always add English annotations. So it's just really interesting to learn from how he plays this game. And for me personally, it's also been really fun to see how he completes some of the scenarios which I've built, just because his way of taking this game and creating new scenery pieces and sort of taking them in, in new ways is really cool. Now, I don't want to just make this an advertisement, but by all means, please subscribe to his channel. I'll link it down in the description because his stuff is absolutely beautiful and I'm gonna try and use this video as proof of this. Now, a little bit more context. The reason why I'm actually showing off three parks in this video, uh, rather than taking one park and looking at it in a sort of in-depth review, is because I originally planned to make a showcase of KV Land a while ago, uh, but I never really got around to it. And today, the new DLC for Park Tech is coming out. In fact, it's the first DLC. It's called Taste of Adventure, and it features a new campaign, new rides, uh, a host of really cool unique features and also two new scenery themes and Studio KV made a trailer for the DLC featuring two parks which he specifically built to show off these themes. So in this video I want to showcase these two parks along with a brief look into KV Land which is his sort of main park that he's built recently on his YouTube channel although now he's gone on to make some other things like smaller dioramas which are also really interesting but I think KV Land is probably his biggest and most ambitious project, so something really interesting to look into as well. Now, KV already made a really good video outlining the different features of the DLC. I'll link that down in the description as well if you're curious to see what the game is going to feature in this new DLC, but he didn't really give much of an in-depth look into these newly built parks. So I would like to dig into these and see what kind of tricks he's done, especially given the fact that all of this scenery is just now coming out today and he already seems to have mastered it. So it'll hopefully be a bit of a lesson for all of us. So this map that I'm looking at right now is Candyland and it showcases the new Candyland theme in the game. And as you can see, everything is quite bright. Even the water is now uh, pink, which is one of the features of the DLC is that you can now color water. Although I also have to say, along with the DLC is a free update of the game. And I believe the coloring of water is available for free as well. Um, but you're gonna have to check out uh, Park Tech's website for more detailed information. I'll put that down in the description <laughs> as well. But anyway, moving on, everything in this park is absolutely pastel colored. One of my favorite things that sort of uh, stuck out to me when I started looking at this is the amazing giant table set which he made here showcasing some of the new candy pieces that we have and there is really a very wide variety in these if you go into scenery and I turn off everything except the candy theme uh, and if you go to props there's about 24 candy themed props that you can use and I think the the best way to sort of combine them is to use these large cake layers and build up different cakes with it and then you have this large assortment of things that you can place on top of this and he used some stuff of that very creatively throughout this build as you'll see um, but this is probably my favorite use of it just this giant table set made out of some really unique pieces like the uh, candle over here for instance being made out of pillar pieces and then having the giraffe statue in the middle of the cake but other than that, it's really just using these new candy pieces. I also really just love the giant chair. Uh, something to also note is the licorice over here, which is really a fence, which you can recolor in pretty much any color you want to provide some candy themed uh, fences around your paths. 
This is the Clockwork, which is a new ride, which I believe is based on a Zamperla ride in real life, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but it's a very recent addition, actually, in terms of the flat ride uh, roster in real life as well. Uh, but it's this really cool ride where you have different spinning arms that kind of look like they're going to intercept each other. But really they don't, because mechanically they, uh, they really can't. But yeah, moving on from that, one of my favorite parts also about this build is the entrance building. And <laughs> I'm calling it an entrance building because technically if you turn off all of the scenery, this is where the people are coming from. But it's really the main weenie of the park, if you will, the sort of Disney castle-like addition with also the, the flagship attraction, which is the spinning coaster here, uh, going all around it. And what I thought was really cool about this build in particular is the way that he used the uh, whipped cream piece, which is from the candy set, as sort of clouds around the castle, and also used different pieces of candies to top off the spires of the building, which I thought is really cool. Um, now, I'm probably gonna have to talk about this coaster for a bit because this is a new coaster type, and while it's similar to the spinning coaster that's already in the game, uh, this one's much more intense. It's based on the real life max spinning coaster, at least, that's as far as I can gather. Uh, like Time Traveler, for instance, in Silver Dollar City is very similar to this. So it has a launch section, actually. You can launch this thing. So if I turn off this view, here we go. Then you can see a launch section uh, right inside, uh, or right next to the building here, actually. And uh, you can also go upside down with it. So you can make some really interesting elements with that. Now, moving on from there, something which I also found uh, really interesting is the new gingerbread pieces, which are, I suppose, a bit Christmassy as well. I think you can probably kind of combine that with a sort of winter theme as well. Um, but they're basically just standard gingerbread pieces. I can probably take a look at them in the scenery menu here. Uh, you just get a bunch of walls, a roof, and certain detailing to make uh, an icing based gingerbread house and I thought he made some interesting combinations with these pieces as well some interesting colors of uh, or interesting choices of colors because as you can see each of these gingerbread houses even though they use the same gingerbread pieces they all have a different kind of color scheme and personally color schemes I think are one of the strongest points of KV's builds he always manages to find a different color scheme for every building and somehow makes them fit together and in this park especially, there's really creative use of color, I think. Uh, whether it's recoloring these trees to make them look like candy trees, uh, these are really just the regular sort of green bobby trees, uh, usually. Uh, these are actually one of my favorite trees in the game. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, there we go, the blobby tree. Um, but even the, the other ones, pretty much anything is recolorable in the foliage uh, section of this game. So you can actually play a lot with that and it's something that honestly I think I have to do a bit more because I'm kind of uncreative when it comes to recoloring foliage to kind of make new things but KV always does it really well. And something which I also like is the new rock pieces. So you can see some of the old rocks that have always been in the game here but the adventure theme also gave us some new rock pieces with gems on it, which are really cool. And they kind of combine really well with the old rock pieces as well, which is nice. And speaking of recolored foliage, he also used the yucca plants from the adventure theme and kind of recolored them to provide some very colorful ground shrubbery, which I thought was an interesting uh, sort of variation as well. Something which I tended to forget uh, all the time is that Many of these adventure pieces are completely recolorable, even if you think that they're not going to be. So the Monstera plant, for instance, can also just be recolored to make it purple. So, um, I mean, this is especially useful if you're trying to make something kind of unrealistic and playful, like the Candyland theme here. Uh, but it could even be useful in a real life situation or in a sort of realistic situation, I should say, if you're going for a bit more variation in your foliage colors. I don't know, that's a point at which personally I think I should take for myself. And yeah, that is basically as much as I guess I could say about this build. Oh, one of my other uh, things that I really like about this is just the different hues of the pathwork. You can really see a sort of subtle transition 
from different blues and purples and pink shades across the pathwork, uh, which just looks really cool. And it doesn't even take that much effort. If you zoom in, you can kind of see the subtle changes from one shade to another. Um, but as soon as you zoom out and you get the whole picture, you can just see the path kind of subtly changing as you're going from one area to the next. Anyway, that's about all I wanted to say about the Candyland theme. Now let's move on to the adventure map that KV made because it's also really interesting and it showcases some of my favorite new rides in this DLC. And here we go. Here's the adventure themed map. And as you can see, it's very different and largely based on sort of South and Central American Mayan architecture, Inca architecture, these kinds of things. It's it's to me always felt very Indiana Jonesy. If you go to Disney parks and look at the Indiana Jones rides, kind of that sort of adventure theme. Uh -huh. Because obviously adventure is quite a broad theme, but this is where really a lot of the architectural and prop elements are taken from. And if you look at the kind of wall sets which you get here, it's all very much this subtle brick texture with different detailings on it and um, different pieces that you can combine to create these large pyramids which you see here. Now there are also some interesting props which some of these were honestly added while KV was still working on these parks so not everything is featured in these parks, not even every ride is featured in these parks. Some of the new roller coasters and rides are missing from it. Uh, but this also kind of means that even for me some of these pieces are very new even if I've been updated with you know, the, the pieces that are being added for these DLCs uh, while they're being added. A lot of this stuff was really just added a few weeks leading up to the release of the, of the DLC, so it's kind of new for me sometimes as well. And especially the foliage though, I think is really cool. This was definitely some of the earliest stuff that I remember being added of the adventure theme, but with just these few extra um, tropical pieces and especially these vine pieces I think there's a lot more variation that you can add in your foliage if you combine them with you know the existing trees and palm trees that were already in the game that kind of go with the adventure theme as well especially given the fact that to be honest the foliage choice in the original game was a bit limited just the fact that you get this extra ground shrubbery to play with I think helps out a lot in creating variety and complexity in your foliage. Anyway, uh, to actually talk about the map which KV made here, I think it's overall just a good showcase of what you can build with the new building pieces. So you can really see the sort of Inca, Aztec, Mayan kind of architecture here. And especially on the wooden coaster, I think it was used really creatively. I want to catch a POV actually of this one sometime soon because I really like this one. Um, but yeah, we'll get to that in a second. First, I want to showcase some of the newer rides, which I really like. So we have the River Rapids, and something that I thought was absolutely amazing about these things is that you can actually change the width of the track. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if you should call it a track, but then I'm not sure what else to call it. Uh, but you can make it as, as wide as you want within a certain margin, which I believe this is the widest you can go. But within this and this, you can make it just about as wide as you want and then you have these different sort of standard pieces to play with. Now the River Rapids is of course a staple of theme park games and they always kind of play out the same uh, but in this case I think it's quite a bit more flexible because you have this sort of width changing to whatever you want it to be and um, as you can see pieces like the waterfall pieces also conform to whatever curve you're doing so the waterfalls can be straight or they can be an s-bend or a curve depending on whatever you want to do they can be on one side or on the other side of the track or even on both sides uh, but one of my favorite additions here is these new bumpers which you can add into the track they automatically uh, change to the right rotation depending on which side of the track they're at and they can be used to sort of get the rafts out of a sticky situation where they get stuck anywhere um, but they're just such a staple on real life rapids that I never really saw integrated in a theme park game like this that I think it's really cool to see them. Um, maybe I should just close this ride, get the people off it so you can kind of see how it works. You can really just grab one of these and place them anywhere you want. So I thought that was really cool. I never really imagined, you know, a building system that works more like just object placements working within the track builder for the rapids. Now, um, 
scenery-wise, there isn't that much else that I want to talk about. But I also want to point out the new car ride, which is kind of like a safari adventure ride, which here has been worked out really beautifully within these giant buildings. And I really like the interaction here between the car ride and the drop tower here. It's this really cool sort of complex with different you know, tracks of the car ride uh, weaving into each other and then you've got these paths which kind of lead up to the, the drop tower. I just always really like seeing this sort of complexity and different layers of different rides and stuff, you know, kind of overlapping each other. Uh, I don't know, that's always something that I try to do as much as possible in my scenario builds, but sometimes it's really difficult to pull it off. But I think this part of the map specifically pulls it off really well. And um, what I really like about the safari ride in particular is that it has a very similar thing to the bumpers of the, ri uh, the river rabbits. So if I just close this for a second and try to edit it, uh, you might have noticed that there are these small and slightly larger bumps on the track. And they work in a very similar way. You can just drag a bump and drag it to anywhere on the track that you want and make any combination of bumps that you want and you can really <laughs> you can get the car to do some crazy bumpy movements uh, with this or just do it like Kavy did here and just have a bump here and there to add a bit to the thrill of the ride even if it's just a calm uh, family ride that's more focused on a sort of dark ride you know scenery perspective but um yeah that is just about it now it's time to move on to the wooden coaster let's See if we can actually catch this going around. All right, there we go. Now, I think KV was inspired by sort of very thematic wooden coasters in real life. The sort of um, Rutschebahnen in Tivoli Copenhagen, for instance. These old wooden coasters with a lot of scenery around them and layouts that kind of go back and forth. But in this case, this wooden coaster in the game, which is a new type, is the inverted wooden coaster and as you've already told it, it can go upside down in well a bunch of sort of standard inversions that you might already know like corkscrews and loops and then whatever twists you can come up with and it's actually based i believe on the uh, gravity group inverting coasters in real life partly at least the cars look like this very much and then uh, if you build a corkscrew though, it looks very much like the new GCI coaster concepts, which if you've seen my Planet Coaster Uzuri Gardens videos where I tried to make an inverting GCI wooden coaster, they very much resemble that. Uh, and this is a new type of wooden coaster by GCI, which is not actually built yet in real life. It's still uh, only shown off at the IAPA convention. But it's a really cool coaster type and I was personally really excited to see this make its way into the game. I have to say, just to address uh, a bunch of comments about RMCs, as far as I'm aware the devs also want to add RMCs into the game but it's really difficult to do this support wise. So for now, for inverting wooden coasters, this is the more feasible option. And I can't make any promises or statements about other kind of coaster types that may or may not be added into the game in the future, but I'm really glad that this one's been added anyway because it's a really cool sort of way to add variety and more thrills on the standard wooden coaster. Speaking of which, I think the DLC really sort of has this as an overarching theme to take coasters that we already, you know, sort of have but add new, more modern and thrilling additions of it. So we've got the launched inverting spinning coaster, the inverting wooden coaster here, and then two other coaster types that I might as well show off. Uh, another addition is the swinging coaster, which is like a wild mouse, but it rocks from side to side. And then the vertical spinning coaster, which is like the real life 4D coaster where the seats can freely flip upside down, which is also really cool. Anyway, back to KV's park. Some other pointers that I think he did really well and that honestly I can learn a bit from as well is just the sheer variety of foliage. You can really see the mixture of new adventure foliage along with some of the old palm trees and bushes that we already had to make this very jungle-esque foliage around this whole area. I really like the addition of the basalt rocks everywhere, which are a new scenery piece which you can find in props uh, to add these kind of volcanic rock pieces. 
which is a really cool touch. And just overall, the way that he used the standard stone pieces to make the, the basic shapes of all the buildings, and then added all kinds of details, like these yellow and blue decorations uh, over here, and on a lot of these other buildings as well. I thought that was just a really neat way of using this theme. For me personally, whenever I'm subjected to a new theme in a game like this, it's always a bit of a struggle to figure out you know, how you can use these pieces exactly. Um, but I think KV's builds kind of showed off how you can use these pieces and kind of give a baseline to take some inspiration from and to sort of base your own builds on. So honestly, I kind of wish that I was able to see these parks before I started on the campaign because they give some really cool ideas about what you can do with the theme. But not much I can change about then in hindsight. Um, speaking of which, I haven't even said this in any official capacity, I suppose, but I've worked on the campaign for the new DLC as well. So if you're curious about that, I'll definitely show those off on YouTube at some point in the future. Anyway, I'm getting too off topic. It's time to move over to the, the real topic of this video and why I wanted to make this video in the first place and um, focusing a bit more on KV himself and why I like his stuff so much. It's time to look at KV land. All right, now it is finally time to take a brief look into KV land. And I just realized why I'm not a showcase YouTuber because I keep going off topic, but I'm gonna try to stay on topic as much as I can here and just give you a brief overview of the park. Now, before I get into this, apologies for the mediocre frame rate. I really can't get this to run better on my slow computer. And keep in mind, this is really a huge park with a lot of stuff in it. So there's quite a bit to explore. But I've noticed that as long as I zoom in a little bit, the frame rate is decent enough. And come think of it, I guess I'm not as terrible of a position because I remember that Coaster B did send me his park because he couldn't get a decent frame rate at all. But here we go, I'm getting off topic again. So um, starting off, I'm just gonna start off with what KV started off in uh, his series with. So I'm gonna try to follow a bit of a chronological uh, path with this video. So we have a large highway going here with these this place where all of these supplies would be dropped off and there's a giant backstage area for the park here with these stuff uh, things from a gameplay perspective, but then also this really cool storage of spare roller coaster track and scenery pieces and coaster cars Which I think is really awesome because that's definitely the kind of place that you could realistically see in real life you know these Locations where shipments get dropped off and where if there's gonna be a new roller coaster being built or there's some spare trek or whatever You could always have some stuff just lying around But yeah from there we go into the entrance of the car park Which is pretty much just a car park uh, kind of a standard fare I guess but personally I'm really bad at making car parks So I really respect how well organized and laid out this car park is even if it is quite a small one and I especially like the whole bus section here, where right in front of the entrance, uh, quite public transit oriented, we have a giant bus depot, which is super nice. And I really love the design also of the whole canopy in front of it as well. And there's even a custom bus, which looks really cool, which if you zoom in, you can tell is really just a bunch of walls and detailing made to look like an actual bus, but it works super well in this situation. So, I, I don't know, I really appreciate that. But yeah, going from there, we get the actual entrance of the park, a giant plaza with a very large, almost castle-like building, which is what KV started off the park with. And next to that, we have a very similar sort of building, which looks very fancy from the inside, but then on the other side, it's really just a, a sort of construction place. And you can tell that just like real life parks will often do, this whole facade is really nothing more than just a facade and not an actual building. But yeah, going from the entrance, which is this giant gate here, we have a large area with a lot of paths, uh, which I think makes a lot of sense. This is the kind of area I think you'll see at the start of a park. You know, there's a lot of people around here. You need all of that space. Uh, some of the small uh, things that really struck my eye here 
is the uh, the way that he used different path colors to make these subtle differences in the asphalt or concrete flooring, uh, which you'll often see in real life parks, especially if they have the paths which are made out of different slabs of concrete material. Uh, you really see these sort of minute differences in the textures. So I really like this sort of subtle approach to different path textures. And next to that, a nice little teacups with a tent-like structure, which I've never personally tried with the cables like this. Um, but it's something that I should probably try in some point in the future. Uh, if not just with a different design, but I really like the simplicity of this flat ride skin. Now the sort of first main attraction, even if it's just a very simple coaster, is rolling Z or Z, depending on whether you're an American or British person, uh, right here, which is based on rolling X in Korea. I actually didn't know about rolling X before KV introduced it in his series. I only knew Everland from the T Express and the um, the Eagles Fortress, which are both very famous coasters in the roller coaster community. But the rolling X is apparently just a simple aerodynamics corkscrew coaster and so this is the kind of layout that KV built here. Only thing to note I suppose about this layout is that the corkscrews go opposite directions which in real life they're both in the same direction but given the fact that we don't have diagonal corkscrews that work out really well with a layout like this I understand that KV had to change the direction of one of the corkscrews but Overall, I think the layout looks really cool. I really like the station coming into this sort of main plaza of the of the park. And then of course a transfer track as well with a little roof over it, which is really neat. And even an entrance uh, for employees. And this is the kind of insane detail to try and make this park feel a bit more real and feel a bit more realistic. Just like all of the clutter around the entrance that I really like about this park. Uh, now moving on a little bit from there to the right, as KV did in his original series, I suppose, is a splash battle, which honestly, I had never tried the splash battle in Park Tech before I saw this. And personally, I was just so surprised to see these ring targets everywhere and see that people were really aiming for this. I had no idea that the splash battle in Park Tech worked this way and that you can just put these ring targets wherever you want. Uh, but it's really cool. Um, definitely something I might try later on because I'm not much of a splash battle person, but if it's done like this, it's really quite an interesting and interactive ride. Now, I've heard KV say that this was based on some sort of Lego set, and I have to be honest, I don't know much about Lego, so I don't really recognize it from anything. But I do like the station building a lot with these very bright, contrasting colors, and it's slightly asymmetrical design like this. Uh, very fortress-like and very pirate-like as the rest of this area in general turns out to be as well as you're moving into the log flume here, which is also pirate themed. And then finally you have a large pirate ship in the middle of this. And again, I just really like the way that everything interacts here, everything kind of being uh, put on top of each other and interacting with different parts of the park, having the log flume interact with the paths and vice versa in this way. It just looks really cool and um, it's a really nice way to make rides feel a bit more interconnected. I also like the transition here from the very dark paths to the light paths here. Maybe I should try to transition my paths a bit more as well because the fact that you can recolor anything to anything that you want makes the game very flexible and this is uh, something which I should probably utilize a bit more. Anyway, moving on from that, we have here a giant area with Greek gardens. And this is really just mostly fancy. There aren't many rides here. We have the setup of the carousel in this large, sort of symmetrical, geometric garden. And then a giant station for the monorail, which goes around the entire park. So it's a bit like a Disney park in that sense, uh, which was probably also a lot of the inspiration you know, this park is very similar to these kinds of very heavily themed parks that might not per se be planned beforehand like Disney, but at the same time have a very large budget and are able to make these large immersive areas. And yeah, moving on from that is honestly what I just find probably the most beautiful area in the park. This is one area which personally I really love, even if it's not very exact in its theming. This is the far eastern Shangri-La area of the park. And it's a, it's a bit funny because 
I originally expected this to be a purely Korean uh, style build, but uh, as KV himself said, it's a bit difficult to distinguish between different Asian uh, roofs or uh, different Asian architectural styles of Japanese, Chinese and Korean because they all come from the same roots in the far distant history. Nowadays they're obviously quite different and they each have very different detailing and compositions etc. But when you're just doing a sort of overall basic Asian style in Park Tech, it can be quite generic and uh, quite non-specific. But regardless of that, I really love the setup of this scenery piece here. Just this whole build with the waterfalls and these giant buildings next to them. It has a lot of depth to it and I almost wish I could cut out this section and just make it a little diorama like some of his recent videos because it just works so well on its own and I don't know there's not there's not even much that I could say about it um, some of the things which I, I guess I, I could point out is that he used some of the fantasy walls which are curving and kind of look like an Asian roof to make these pointy Asian roofs and then on the sides it's really just a combination of different roof corners to make the pointed bits at the end of the roof. Of course, it doesn't look exactly like it would in real life, but I think within Parkitect, it's as much of an approximation as you can do without resorting to a lot of uh, custom-made assets and mods. Speaking of which, I should also say this park uses mods, but it's very different from Coaster Bees, Bush Gardens, I think, in a sense that the mod use is very, very limited. I'm not exactly sure how many mods this uh, this map uses, but I think it's 10 or less and it's really just kind of sprinkled here and there and it's mostly related to roller coasters and other sort of practical theme park things like that. The road pieces for instance are a mod, uh, he used mods to create the separate track pieces and catwalks for the coasters, uh, but when it comes to the scenery, most of it is just completely in-game and completely vanilla, so this whole build you could technically just build with uh, the vanilla build of the game. Anyway, uh, I should probably talk about this coaster for a bit because this is personally, I think, my favorite coaster. Let's actually give it a right quick. We see it going around now, Ascension. And apparently it also has a, a Korean name that I'm not gonna be able to read or pronounce. So I'm just gonna refer to it as Ascension. And it's a, it's a hyper coaster with a launched lift hill, which is really interesting, based on the, the in-game hyper coaster, which is based on the Intamin real-life hyper coaster. And it sort of does a very standard out and back layout. Originally, it had a slightly different layout, which was apparently a bit more simple, but now it has this sort of tangle at the, uh, the end of the layout before it makes its way back to the station with a bunch of airtime hills. And yeah, I just really like this layout, but most of all, I love the, uh, the interaction that it has with the station area. And once you come back, you have this whole intricate structure with the brake runs up here. And then if I turn off the scenery view for a second here. Um, ooh, oh god. There we go. There you can see that um, in reality, it just kind of loops down here and then comes back. But you know, he could have just gone into the lift hill straight away, of course, but I really like that it just goes down here. Uh, has a bit of interaction with the uh, fountain, with the small font, uh, pond here. And yeah, it's just a nice twist on what would otherwise just be a very standard layout. And of course, something that I also like is the sign that he added later. Because this is really one of the two major coasters in the park and one of the things that's supposed to draw in guests. So it has a very fancy sign on the lift hill with also a custom support structure. So he used some of the tower pieces to make these custom supports and finally added some catwalks, which is custom scenery. So that's not from the vanilla game, um, but he just added some catwalks to go down here. Although my roller coaster enthusiast sensibilities would kind of like to protest this idea because at the end of the day, you can really just walk down here on the catwalk as well. That's kind of the idea of a catwalk, but I, I'm i sorry, I have to appreciate the structure of it. Anyway, moving on from there, we have the science fiction themed area. And this area is probably the most intricate and detailed area in the park. Perhaps not in terms of the uh, piece count, but definitely in terms of how much there is to look at. There's 
so much stuff overlapping each other here that it's difficult to even see where to start. Personally, this always reminded me of some old Flux Trans builds in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 and Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. He always did some very similar stuff like this. It was always a, a sci fi themed, sort of industrial, desolate, cyberpunk style area. Um, and I mean, I totally mean that as a compliment. The Flux Trance's Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 stuff was really cool. Now, this area features one roller coaster in my build of the game, but when KV uh, showed off the vertical spinning coaster in the trailer for Parktect, he actually put it down here in this area. So you can't see the vertical spinning coaster here, uh, but it would have been there. Um, but we do have the Conveyor Express, which is a really creative way to use the Wild Mouse Coaster to make this sort of conveyor belt-like roller coaster. It has a bunch of really long straight sections, which I guess, from a coaster perspective, don't really make that much sense. But from a themed perspective, it's really cool and it's really well immersed into this general sci-fi theme. The same goes for the launched drop tower here, which has a really cool structure around it as well. And yeah, just the, the overall area of the sci-fi theme is really hard to take in if you're zoomed out if you're zoomed out like this so just a bunch of other structures that i'd want to check out he used recolored rocks to make sort of glowing uh rock structures which i thought are super interesting and then there's this machine that seems to kind of mine it out that also interacts with the monorail so there's that extra layer of scenery interaction there. Uh, a giant building here for the monorail station, which is uh, a bit obscured by the tower. Here we go. Everything very intricate and lots of different elements interacting with each other. I, for some reason, really like the coloring on this whole area. Just this subtle, you know, yellow color and then no other colors with maybe just a few accents here and there, but mostly just yellow and gray scales. It works out really well to make this whole kind of messy area in terms of structure seem fits together really well uh, in terms of the colors and yeah moving on from there if we go to the entrance of this whole area there's a there's a really cool structure down here as well which i believe yeah there we go features another station for the um unique sort of inland monorail which goes around there and sort of makes for almost a kind of public transportation system within this area with local and regional trains. Which, it's, it's kind of uh, cool to see that sort of thing. I'm quite the public transportation nerd, and this is really taking me back to urban monorail systems. Anyway, not to dwell, not to dwell on that for too long. Moving back down for an area which I totally forgot about earlier, so I'm sorry i'm actually gonna have to go back here for a second this is the old british area and it has a coaster which is very obviously inspired by oblivion in alton towers a simple drop tower with a vertical or a simple uh, vertical drop coaster with a drop straight underground surrounded by paths and after that you just curve it do a quick spiral around the spiral um, slide here and then you get back into the station so it's a very simple ride it's a very simple area which he made in just one episode if i remember correctly but i really like it as a touch to sort of fill in the rest of the park and it transitions quite well with some of the surrounding areas as well it's always very difficult to figure out a way to transition between different areas so here for instance it's a large gate building uh, for the sci-fi area, it's this building with the monorail station and the toilets in it. And this British area here just fills in the spaces between it quite well. And then moving from there, we get what in terms of scenery is also one of my favorite areas, the Alpine area. And this is honestly an area that I ended up taking quite a bit of inspiration from if not just for my uh, scenario playthroughs, because I really like the approach to colors and textures and different items in this in this area. And I think it shows off uh, KV's playstyle very well. So we have a large entrance building here, and then an alpine village with a bunch of buildings and different squares here. And I really like the way that he used different path textures, again with the slightly different colors everywhere, but then also some divisions between different types of bricks, leading to different places here. So 
it's a bit more interesting than just having the same path texture everywhere. And something which uh, KV really tends to do is use different pieces in the game to sort of create his own textures. So he usually puts different items into walls to make small bricks and he does it so well for some of these buildings in this area. So here for instance, you can see the cornerstones, the brick cornerstones, which are a scenery piece in the game over here to make bricks. Um, but then also he uses, for instance, I believe this is a chimney piece and some other small pieces. I'm not even sure which piece this is exactly. Okay, so that's just a border arch. So yeah, some of these are on grid, some of these are off grid, and he just kind of mixes them together to make an overall uh, quite organic sort of uh, stucco wall with just a few bricks uh, popping out here and there to create a brick texture. Uh, this is really cool and he, and he tends to do it a lot on the alpine theme and it shows really well here. And this area also has one of the sort of flagship rides of the park, the giant wooden coaster Mount Wave. And it definitely looks like a wave. This thing has always reminded me of Hakuge in Nagashima Spa Land in Japan with its huge structure and very big white supports and actually the support structure is extra large because KV ended up adding a lot of custom supports to it to make it a bit uh, more strong and to make it seem a bit more stable I suppose because in the game when you start building diagonal you end up getting very few supports and especially if you're sort of overlapping earlier parts of the track they start disappearing very quickly so yeah, with these supports and the blue track, it looks very similar to Hakuge and very similar to a, a wave sort of crashing up until the shore of a mountain or something like that. So yeah, I really like this layout as well. Something to also note is just the use of mountains around the entire park to basically make it feel like there's this large mountain valley on the side here, which I suppose is also inspired by uh, Everland in Korea, which is similarly built into the mountain. And so you have these two flagship coasters kind of towering over the park on top of the hills, very similar to how T-Express and, well, in the past, I suppose, Eagle's Fortress do it in Everland in Korea. I think it's just also interesting how a lot of people end up taking their inspiration from very local sources like that given that I've always taken a lot of my inspiration from European parks, even when it comes to different themes. Anyway, that'll do it for KV Land. I hope you guys were as inspired by this build as I've been throughout the last couple of months trying to stay updated with what KV's been building and trying to take some inspiration from it. Because honestly, he makes some really great stuff and also a lot of videos because this barely scratches the surface of what KV's made. So if you want to see more Park Tech videos and perhaps even some playthroughs of the campaign of the next DLC because as far as I've heard he's going to be also making some videos of that, definitely subscribe to Studio KV and yeah, stay up to date to all of his videos. I'm not even going to try to <laughs> advertise myself here because I don't think I've reached anywhere near this level on Sandbox Park Tech. Although, speaking of that, before I close, I always get a lot of questions if I'm going to play Parkitect in Sandbox. And while I've, res while I've responded to a lot of the comments, I think it's probably good to also address this in a video. I do want to play Parkitect Sandbox at some point, but I also want to finish the campaign before I get there. And right now, I'm very stuck on Hickory Hills and I'm trying to get over it. But once the whole campaign is done, and by that I mean the base game campaign, but I also want to play the DLC campaign. I'd love to try something sandbox based, especially with all the mods and assets which are coming out on the Steam Workshop. So yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next Parkitect video. Bye guys!